If you like this video, please press like and consider subscribing. Thank you. You might remember a few years back, Elon Musk proposed a crazy idea for passenger commercial use of Starship. And many of us wondered if he was really serious about using Starship, or let's call it a what it is, a passenger transport from one part of the globe to another. Last year, Gwen Shoplow, president of SpaceX, talked a bit more about the concept during the TED interview and was emphatic the concept is still alive and will become fully operational within a decade from now, offering customers rapid transport solutions across the globe. For example, a flight from London to Sydney lasting only 34 minutes. Current flight takes some 22 hours. Before I continue, I would like to ask you to consider becoming my patrons by donating to my Patreon account. My YouTube channel just got demonetized and I would like to continue making videos, something many of you here like. But I'd rather maintain full editorial control over my videos on my channel and for that I need actual supporters. Link for my PayPal account and Patreon account in the description. Thank you. So on Twitter, Elon Musk hinted that the company is looking at a single-stage Starship spacecraft as a potential pillar of its rapid Earth-to-Earth -Earth mass passenger transport, which is supposed to enable realization of hypersonic mass transit at business class prices. The way Elon Musk hopes this can be achieved with a Starship is to reduce the amount of complex hardware and infrastructure requirement with a perhaps slightly smaller, this is what I think, Starship which will have less fuel sufficient for perhaps 20 to 30,000 kilometer range. However, that being said, normal Starship would do fine. Just the margins will be a bit tighter and less space for maneuvering, financially speaking. However, before you jump for joy, there's a few issues I should point out. First off, the financials must be really spot on for this venture to have any potential success. Meaning, how many passengers SpaceX can secure and what the ticket price might be. Yes, we know business class, but this could mean anything between $1,500 and $5,000 per journey. The other and more important aspect is the safety. You see, when you lose a single plane, there might be survivors and the planes tend to have much higher safety record. Rockets, well, they tend to explode and on a more regular basis. SpaceX had several disasters with Falcon 9, so loss of Falcon Starship would be a mitigating disaster for SpaceX and for the regulators as well. However, to make financial sense, SpaceX will need to maintain high volume, which brings us closer to something going wrong. Safety will need to be addressed and will be a paramount importance. If something goes wrong with a single Falcon Starship, any ideas of SpaceX having colonies on Mars, the Moon, will be only a far-fetched dream. Some of you might wonder if SpaceX Starship will be capable of SSTO flights or single-stage to orbit flights, and if that means the Starship will be capable of reaching low Earth orbit purely on the fuel on board. First off, yes, Starship can reach low Earth orbit with its own engines and fuel on board. Problem isn't reaching the SSTO capability. Problem is efficiency and landing. The Starship will need all that power and all that fuel to reach low Earth orbit, that there will be little fuel left for Starship to land. However, if Starship needs to achieve, let's say, 50 km orbit, or fraction of what is needed for SSTO flight, the amount of fuel on board requirements are significantly less and make flight of 10 or 20,000 km range plausible, especially if these flights take only one hour or less. The Starship could become relatively affordable for many. Perhaps you won't get your astronaut wings flying Starship, but the chances of experiencing really fast flight from, say, London to New York in less than an hour will be tempting for many. It is not clear how much the ticket for Starship will cost, but I expect it won't be more than what business premium class passengers on British Airways on flight to New York pay, which is around $3,500 return. If SpaceX can hit these numbers and still make a good profit, SpaceX could become a major competitor on routes to New York and other business destinations across the globe. Okay, we must be honest. 
Don't expect such flights to smaller destinations, such as Prague, Vienna, Zurich or Zagreb. But as long as the city is near a major body of water, an important business hub such as London, Paris, Amsterdam, New York, Tokyo, Shanghai or Sydney, expect service to these cities courtesy of SpaceX. And within a decade from now.